God is so awesome. You know, uh, there was a big city counterfeiter decided the best place to pass off his phony $18 bills would be in some small, out-of-the-way town. So he got his new wheels and he went off to Brother Billy's store and did it. <laughs> and so he found a tiny, so he found Brother Billy's store, he entered the store and handed one of the bogus bills to Brother Billy and said, can I get change for this please? And Brother Billy asked him, after he saw the $18 bill, said, you want uh, two nines or three sixes? <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about something that's very powerful in this day. We started last week. As a matter of fact, next week, next week's going to be the ending. If you know somebody that has been uh, terrorized, I'm going to say terrorized, I'm saying is uh, not, not just a victim, but terrorized by divorce, adoption, uh, uh, family, hair parts, whatever, please get them here next week because it's the final one on identity theft. Really need you here. It's going to be awesome. It's the final one on this. God is awesome, and I believe He's trying to do it tremendous work in our life. I'm not going to go totally over everything from last week, but I am going to tell you a few things from last week just to keep it up, keep everything going, and keep uh, keep some continuity. Uh, 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 you got your Bible say amen. Amen. You don't say on me. Alright. Now, now, now you don't have to, you're not going to have to read it right now because I'm going to put it up for you, but, <clears throat> but eventually we're going to turn to Psalm 139. Amen. <clears throat> now let's pray. Father, we love you, Lord. We praise your name. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your powerful word, Lord, that there's nothing like your word. We thank you, God, that you have all things in your hands, under your feet, in control. In the name of Jesus, we know, God, that you have got this, and we trust you totally in the name of Jesus. And God, help us, Lord, not try to be pleasing people, God, but please you. Father, because when we try to please people, it sends so many mixed messages that we don't even know who we are anymore. Ask you right now, Lord, to help us, God, to, to please you in everything we do. In the name of Jesus, we pray. The church said? Amen. Amen, amen, amen. So now, uh, again, uh, uh, we're talking about identity theft. Y'all remember we talked, started talking about it last week. Uh, one of the biggest things now on television is people trying to sell you identity theft protection. And even uh, Dave Ramsey said that you need identity theft protection because it's so rampant in this last day. It is one of the things that's actually, uh, uh, I told you I had my credit card compromised. Uh, and then they gave me another credit card and said, we fixed this one so this one can't be compromised. And a week later it was compromised. And so I got that one changed and it said, now we know this won't be compromised. And a week later it was compromised. I was not in Texas, and possibly in Texas, in Arizona, in Louisiana, all in the same night. Amen? I mean, I, I got a cake, but I can't do that. Amen? So, so again, identity theft and, and just trying to steal your information, period. So, so now, again, this is just a little bit from last week to bring us up to speed. Uh, uh, there's three questions that everybody asks every day. You can say, well, not me. Yes, you do too. It may not be in the way that I've got it set here, but you've got it in your mind. It runs through our mind every day. And that is, here's the three questions, and I'm going to go over just a second. Uh, who am I? That's your person. Who am I? You may feel confident in your house when you get to work, and if you're working in the same area for all these years, you may feel good, and they put you in another area. Again, you want to know, who am I? What am I, you know, and, 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 and uh, why am I here? What's my purpose? You may be here this morning, and you're saying to yourself, why has God even put me on this earth? Because the way things are happening right now, I think the earth would be a whole lot better without me. I know nobody's ever said that. That's right. Amen. So, so, so again, why am I here? And then how do I get preparation? How do I get to where you want me to go, God? And so, so, so here it is. Remember, Satan wants to tangle a, a crazy identity theft web in your head to keep you off balance. Because if he can keep you off balance, then he can keep you trying to please people. He can keep you trying to, to bounce back and forth and you don't even know what to do anymore. So, so here it is. Again, uh, 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 you formed me in my, uh, my inward parts. You, you, you uh, knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you for I'm fearfully and wonderful made. Look at that little foot. That little foot sticking out Mama's belly. Isn't that awesome? That is such a beautiful, beautiful thing. So now, so let's, just, let's look at this now. Psalm uh, 139, 13 and 14 says, For you were created 
or, or for you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. And then Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over the earth, over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So, so now I want you to think about this. Look at somebody and say, God don't make junk. Tell somebody, God doesn't make junk. Amen. It may not be proper English, but it sure makes me good, feel good inside. God don't make junk. Amen. Uh, this is in a mirror at the house. Uh, uh, warning, reflections in this mirror may be distorted by socially constructed ideas of beauty. My wife put it on the mirror. I walked in and saw that. I don't know if she was talking about me or her. I was trying to figure it out. But when I saw that thing, I thought it was so awesome that we, advertisements tell us what we have to have. Uh, uh, advertisements and billboards tell us what we're supposed to look like. So what a successful man is, what a successful woman is, what beauty really is. And, and, and it gets so aggravating because you can't keep up with all that they're trying to tell us. And used to, instead of saying, if you, uh, 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 you, you, McDonald's started something, you deserve a break today. You deserve. And so now companies say, you deserve to look like this. You deserve to have a home like this. You deserve to be fashioned like this. Let me tell you something. God's got a plan for us, and when God's plan is completing us, we're not going to have to keep jumping back and forth and trying to figure out what's going on. Amen? So, so real quick, like just from last week, uh, in this world there's two voices. There's only two. Did you know that? Y'all say two. two. There's only two voices. First, there's the lie. It's what the enemy wants you to believe about who you are. He tells you every day you're not good enough. He tells you every day you're too short, you're too tall, you're too fat, you're too skinny. Whatever you think you are, it's not going to be good enough. You never measure up to what Satan tries to tell you. And so what you wind up doing is you wind up with this distorted view of yourself. And there are many, many lies. So first, there's the lie. That's what anyone wants you to believe about yourself. And then there's the truth. And that's what God says, who or how He says about you and who you are. There's many lies, but there's only one truth. So when it comes to your identity, there's some lies that the devil wants you to believe. And we started last week, and, and, and here we go. Somebody said, put on your, take off your seatbelt. Somebody said, take it off. Take off your seatbelt. All right. Now when God speaks, He calms, He comforts, He convicts, He encourages, He enlightens, He leads, He reassures, uh, He steals us. But when Satan speaks, we obsess, we get worried, we get condemned, we're discouraged, we're confused, we get pushed, we get frightened, we get rushed. And so it's, I don't know who's talking to me. Is it the lie or the truth? Is it Satan or is it God? There you go right there. Is it common you? Is it comforting you? Is it convicting you and encouraging you? Is it enlightening you or is it making you worry, condemn you and discourage you and confuse you? So, so again, the thief wants you in this position. Because it's at this position, watch this, here it goes. And then we're going right into some of his lies. Anxiety, I don't know who I really am. Depression, I have no hope for the future. Self-doubt, I am so inadequate. Self-consciousness, I am unacceptable and unloved. Low self-worth, I am not good enough. Do not raise your hand. But have you heard any of these lies in the last week? Don't raise your hand, please. Have you heard more than one of them in the last week? Some of you heard them on the way to church. Some of you even hear them now as I speak. That's what Satan wants. He wants to steal your identity. The thief cometh not for to steal and kill and to destroy. But I'm coming that they might have life and that they might have more abundantly. Speaking of Jesus. I like this. I'm a limited edition. Because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. There's only one day to live. My mama used to say, praise God, there ain't but one of you. <laughs> After he came twin brothers, she said, both your twin brothers, both of them, both of them, were easier to raise than you. I said, mama, I don't know why. 
She said, son, what little hair I got left, you did it. I said, mama, it's okay. God's going to do something special. And he said, God's got to use you one day because good Lord, Satan's using you now. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Limited edition. Somebody have to sign a limited edition. Oh, limited edition. I watched. I love this. This is so awesome right here. This is the message version of Psalm 139. This right here is worth the price of admission right here. Oh, yes, you shaped me first inside, then out. You formed me in my mother's womb. I thank you, high God. You're breathtaking. Body and soul, I am marvelously made. I worship in adoration. What a creation. You know me inside and out. You know every bone in my body. You know exactly how I was made bit by bit, how I was sculpted from nothing into something. Like an open book, you watched me grow from conception to birth. All the stages of my life were spread out before you. The days of my life all prepared before I even lived one day. How many here has ever done something you wish you had never done? You can raise your hand now. I mean, here, which things had turned out different in other areas. Amen. If you could go back and start over again in certain areas, would you do it? Well, guess what? You say, well, God can't use me because I made a left turn. God can't use me because I did something here. God can't use me because I walked away from him over here. But this verse of scripture right here tells us that before we were ever born, God already knew every path that we were going to take. Good paths and bad paths. He already knew which way we were going to go and he used it in the equation. And when he put it in the equation, then it comes out that in the end, he still wants to use us. Isn't that awesome? God still wants us to be his child. God still wants to use us in such mighty ways you can never even uh, uh, imagine how God wants to use you. And he's already taken into account every time you blew it. And he still wants to use you. And he'll take those times that you blew it and he'll use it too. Amen? So, so here we go. Here's the two lies that we talked about last week. Get ready. Here it goes. We're talking about taking back your identity. The very first lie. My life has no value because I have failed and deserve to be punished. As a pastor and a counselor, I hear that all the time. I hear it. That's probably the number one thing I hear all the time. My life has no value because I have failed and I deserve to be punished. But the truth is, I have God-given value based not on my past performance, but on Christ who lives in me and gives me freedom from condemnation. Line number two. My life has no value since I've done so many things. My life is ruined. Has anybody ever felt that way? Why? The truth is, I have God given value. I've been given a new life in Jesus Christ. In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sin in accordance with the riches of His grace. Ephesians 1 and 7. That's the first two lies. Anybody ever heard those lies? My life has no value because I failed and deserved to be punished. My life has no value since I've done so many things wrong. My life is ruined. Anybody heard that before? I've heard it over and over, especially after I do something. I would, have you ever do something and go, that was stupid? Or you didn't go, I wish I hadn't done that. Or, God, I don't know why you keep putting up with me. I told you I wouldn't and I did. I'm so glad you didn't go, uh-huh. You know, I, I can hear God. You want to make God laugh? Tell him what you ain't going to do. <laughs> God, I'll never do that again. <laughs> yeah, you will. <laughs> God, you did. I never was super God. Yeah, it was, but I still love you. Get ready. Here's the next slide. This one of those little lies will sink in for a minute. Here we go. Ready? Take it back our identity. Here it goes. The first lie, or the, or the third lie, actually. I never feel valuable because this is just the way I am. I cannot change. I want to say that again. I never feel valuable because this is just the way I am. I cannot change. I, I've seen people that <clears throat> uh, uh, either... Were either from little bitty on up the way they were raised and maybe even talked to and talked about. I see people that kind of grow up with an like inferiority complex or I see people that, that just feel like they're, 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 they're a, a jinx or, or, or that everything 
do was wrong. And so you go talk to them and say, it doesn't have to be this way. And I heard them say, well, you know what? This is the way God made me, and I cannot change. God never created anybody to be a jinx. God never created anybody to be second class. God never created anybody to mess up every place they go, everything they do. God has not made that in your DNA. Amen? So here's the truth. I, I have God-given value because God has changed me on the inside with new characteristics. Wow. Well, I got to hit myself. I'm sorry. I didn't get it right. I thought I messed up. There you go. Praise God. Ready? Number one. Everybody say this with me when you see it. Ready? I am a new creation. You're what? New creation. Y'all sound like the cold hands. <laughs> I'm a what? New creation. Y'all sound a better now. You're what? New creation. There you go. God, listen. Anyone in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are gone away, passed on. Behold, all things are become new. No matter what Satan tries to tell you, your past is behind you and God is ahead of you and with you and you can do all kinds of things with God. We are, have a lot of things we can do and we can understand that we are all new creations once you said yes to Jesus' conviction and you accepted Him as your personal Savior. Something special begin to take place on the inside of you. You are a new creation. Now you're a new creation. Watch this. I have a new nature. In the Old Testament, says it here says you were circum, you, you were also circumcised, putting up the sinful nature, uh, not with the circumcision done with hands of men, but circumcision done with Christ. I remember I was in Bible college, and, and they were talking about the difference in the Old Testament and the New Testament. We're in hermeneutics, and they said, okay, it's in the Old Testament. What was the sign of salvation? And and of course, uh, uh, I said circumcision. He said that's good. He said, now what's the sign of the new, of, of, of salvation? In the New Testament, I said circumcision of the heart. He said, that's good, David. Now, would you stand and tell the class what's the difference? And I said, well, well, actually, Professor, I said, Prof, well, Prof, uh, one don't hurt quite as much as the other. <laughs> <laughs> he said, sit down, David, we'll go to somebody else. All right. Circumcision of the heart. I want you to think about something. Circumcision of the heart means actually that you've cut away the things that hide God from your heart. You've cut away the things that keeps God from working in your heart. And once you've accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, your heart is circumcised. Now it is an open book before God. And if you expect God to use you, then you've got to let Him read that open book. Amen? So we are what? A new creation? Say it. New creation? New creation. We have a new nature? A new nature? Yeah. That's a little better. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I love to put this up here. So, but uh, of course, we still have our old nature kind of kicking in. We were at, can I tell them, Benny? Yeah. About, the, about Thursday. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> we're sitting there after we come out of prison uh, Thursday night. We're sitting there in, in Krispy Kreme, and, and Benny's up in front getting to pick out his donuts. And so uh, I look beside me, and there's a string hanging down. And there's Brandon standing there with a string hanging out. So I pulled it down. I said, oh, a balloon. And so while Benny was reaching over looking for his, <laughs> his donut to pick out, I took it and slid it in his, in, in his belt strap, in his belt loop, and I tied it. <laughs> so Benny walked around the whole store the rest of the night with his balloon. <laughs> Followed him. We sat down, and, and there was a guy there named Jorge. He kept looking over at us, but every time we looked over, he turned to see it the other way. <laughs> then I realized what it was. He was seeing Benny with his balloon. <laughs> and he went laughing at Benny, so he turned his head. Amen. And so we walked out the store. It was so funny. We walked out the store. I thought Benny was going to see that balloon with air hit. So I got real close behind Benny. Benny said, oh, you got a balloon, don't you? <laughs> So yeah, our old nature's still there. 
Do me the kid around and have some fun, amen? That's right. <laughs> yeah, but we got a new nature within us. You know, I don't want to do the things that I used to do. There's some things I used to do that I used to have fun doing. No longer are they fun. I have more fun now serving God and doing things with Him. I've got a new nature. Get ready. We're still going. I told you, it's not gonna, we're not going to be here long today. We'll be out by two. Ready? All right. <laughs> you may not know that. <laughs> Okay, get ready. Here we go. Here we go. Well, come on there, buddy. I have a new heart and a new spirit. You have a new heart and a new spirit. Ezekiel 36 and 26 says, I will give you a new heart and a new spirit in you. Remove my heart of stone and, and remove that heart of flesh. You know, I, I remember watching uh, Scrooge. One of my favorite things to watch is, is the Scrooge or... Uh, Christmas Carol. And I, and I remember after this old man Scrooge, but as mean as he had been, once he got a chance to see the past, the, the present, and the future, and get a chance to see it all together and see opportunities that were there that he lost, and now there's new opportunities that he can make, how his heart changed. And how things, it just every time I see it, it breaks me, I break down into tears. And the only thing I think of that maybe gets me a little, little more than that is when the Grinch is up on that mountain. And all the stuff is getting ready to get pushed off. And he sees the people still worshiping God. Everything was taken away. And they still worship God. You say it's just a cartoon. No, no, no. Everything was taken away from them. And they still worship God. That's right. And so as they worship God, he looks down and says his heart grew up three sizes that day, four sizes that day. Tell you something. God has given us a new heart. And then, watch this. Some of y'all need to understand this one really strong. Matter of fact, you need to look at your wife and tell them, see, I told you. Ready? I have a new mind. You got your speaker on. Is this thing on? There you go. There you go. So, but we Eddie, where you at, Eddie? Can you fix her? I think her thing just died, her uh, earpiece. All right. And we understand the things that we have a mind of Christ. Amen. So, so here we go. Get ready. Get ready. That, mean, that means that you want to do things that please God. That means that when you think of things now, you got the mind of Christ. It means actually now it changes the way you think. You know, uh, before I was married, I didn't really care a whole lot about what anybody else thought because it was just me. But once I got married, I started wondering, how does my wife think about this? What is she going to think about this? What if I get this or that? Is it going to is this going to upset her? And so, so I started to concern now that what's this going to do to both of us? With the mind of Christ, it's the same thing. God, what can I do to make you pleased with me? Well, are you going to be happy with the way I act? So here we go. The next slide. Here's your next slide. <clears throat> Ready? Come on. There she is. <laughs> Y'all, somebody read that out loud. Somebody read that out loud. It's okay, man. As long as I can look good to us. Somebody else read that out loud. My wife will stay as long as I can look good to us. I like what Bill Smith said. He said, we spend money we don't have to buy things we don't need to impress people we don't like. Satan will love to get you to keep up with the Joneses. Satan will love to have you thinking, I got to look good to everybody. I've even seen people get in the stoplight. I'm not kidding. Get in the stoplight trying to impress the people on the car beside them. I've even heard the guy say, I've got to look up. I saw him look up. I was working with a guy one day. Uh, at Procter and Gamble, and 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 he actually went. We were, we were working in the medical part, so in the medical part you had to wear hair nets. And so we walk out, we're talking. As we're walking out, I didn't think anything about it. It's off the third shift. He goes in, he gets in his car, he's riding through Greenville, and he said he pulled up to the stoplight, and there were some girls pulled up beside him, and they were looking at him and smiling. So he said he just laid back, and he kind of did like this. And he said he went the next stoplight, they pulled up beside him again. They still looking at him, smiling. He was going like this. He said about the third or fourth stoplight, they're still smiling at him. And he goes and looks in the rearview mirror and says, I must be looking good today. And then I realize he still had that hair in it all. <laughs> <laughs> he 
didn't think he looked good. They were thinking he looked kind of crazy. Amen. So, 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 so here we go. Look, look. I don't have to impress everybody. I, I, I learned a long time ago, stop trying to impress other people. Your identity will be stolen from you so quick that that's all you try to do is try to look good before other people. But matter of fact, uh, uh, I want to do one thing, and that's look good before God. Amen? So here's the truth. I have God-given value even though I have fallen in the past and may stumble in the future. He has given me a new image. Now get this and this down. We're going to repeat this all together. I'm not even going to go into it too much. I'm just going to get us to repeat it. And then we're getting ready to close. BJ, when we get about to about the 15th one. No, about the 6th one is about time we come to start playing. Ready? Watch this. I want you all to say this with me. I am totally accepted by Christ. Say it again. I'm totally accepted by Christ. In other words, I don't have to try to impress him. Matter of fact, I can't impress him. How can I impress him by showing off? <laughs> How do I impress somebody that can walk on the water? How do I impress somebody that raised the dead? How do I impress somebody that walked through the wall? How do I impress somebody that fed 5,000 men plus women and children? How do I impress somebody like that? God accepts me just like I am with every bump, every bruise. Have you noticed whenever God is showing his people in the Old Testament and the New, he doesn't just show them like they're supermen. He always shows them with all of their problems. He shows them with all their hang-ups. He shows them with all their sin. The reason he shows you with everything is because he wants you to know that even though they were imperfect, they're serving a perfect God. And even though they were imperfect, God could use them to do perfect work. Amen? And so listen, I am totally accepted by Christ. Number two, I am totally blameless before Christ. Somebody, somebody needs to say this out loud about ten times. Ready? I am totally blameless before Christ. Say it again. I am totally blameless before Christ. He has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through the death, through death to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. In other words, listen, do I mess up every day? Yes. Is there a chance for me to sin every day? Yes. Is there a chance for me to blow it every day? Yes. But if I keep myself under the cross, guess what? I am totally blameless before Christ. When you're being accused, guess who's doing the accusing? The accuser of the brethren. Amen? So now, here it goes. we got, we got one more to go. Come on there. There it is. I am totally righteous in Christ. I'll say that. I am totally righteous in Christ. God who made him found no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Wow. Once you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, now your, your, your position changes. Listen, let me tell you something. I may not do all the time do righteous works, and I may not all the time be perfect, and I may do things that actually God does not approve of, but when he looks at me and he sees me under the blood of Jesus Christ, guess what? Now he says it's not your righteousness, but it's his. Amen? Watch, I love this one here. Again, some people need to really start saying these things in their mind every day because if you don't, God then is going to be stolen constantly. Amen? I'm totally complete in Christ. I'll say that. I am totally complete in Christ. In Christ, all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form, and you have been given fullness made complete in Christ, who is the head over every power and authority. Colossians 2, 9 through 10. I am totally, I'll say it again. I am totally complete in Christ. And then finally, here's the last one. I know. Somebody's going to think I've lost my ever-loving mind off of this over this is not my words. This is God's words. If this was my words, I'd like to think of a few more. I'd like to think of another way to do it. Like, he that lives on the possum track is great. He that lives on 107 and the slate's going to drive is awesome. I'd like to put that in no, no. This is God's word. Ready? Some of y'all are going to have a problem even saying this. I can tell you. Ready? I am totally 
perfect because of Christ. I'll say it again. I am totally perfect because of Christ. By one sacrifice he made perfect forever those who are being made holy. Hebrews 10, 14. Now, out of the things you've heard today, out of the lies you've heard today, BJ, come on up here. Out of the lies you've heard today, out of the things you've heard today, I can guarantee you that the things that we all said together, Satan has not said to you. But I can guarantee you that the lies that we talk about, you've heard and maybe even heard them today. God loves us so much that if we'll get up under the cross and stay up under the cross, Wow, I'm just going to say it one more time. I just, I, I just can't help but just think about this. this. This actually does something good within me because I know that I need this. I have to tell myself this many times during the day. Here it goes. I have God given value based not on my past performance, but on Christ who lives in me. I have God given value because I've been given new life in Jesus Christ. I uh, uh, have been given value because of God who has changed me on the inside with new characteristics. I have a new heart. A new spirit. I have a new mind. Uh, I'm totally accepted by Christ. I'm totally blameless before Christ. I'm totally righteous in Christ. I'm totally complete and I'm totally perfect in Christ. Does that mean again? I'm not, does that mean I'm not going to stumble? Does that mean I'm not going to fall? Does that mean I'm not going to please God at times? Yes, that's what it means. This stuff's still going to happen. It doesn't mean you're not going to do it. Yes, you will do this. But what it means is when you're up under the blood of Jesus Christ and you live a repentive lifestyle, you go to God constantly and say, God, examine my heart. It's circumcised. The flesh has been moved out of the way. Think about this now. I've accepted you as my personal Savior. My heart has been circumcised. The flesh has been moved out of the way. And now there's a direct access between God and my heart. God, search my reins. Search my heart. Show me how I am. Show me what you don't like. And then, Lord, let me give it to you. And the Bible says that he's faithful and just. Faithful and just to forgive us of anything we've done wrong and to keep us in that point of righteousness with God. It's not what I've done. It's what God did. It's not what I said. It's what Jesus said. It is finished. Quit paying for it. Quit paying for everything you've ever done. I can tell you, I've got a long, long tag of stuff that I should be paying for. But you know what? Jesus come in and tore up the price tag and said, quit paying for stuff you did in the past and accept what I've done for you. Quit paying for it. Because you'll never pay for it. You'll never quit paying. Jesus paid the price. It is finished. Next week, we're going to talk about people that have been raised in problem homes and people that have been gone through divorce and people have been adopted and that sort of thing. Next week, please come. And if you know somebody that's having a problem with their identity, next week's the last time I want you to be here and bring somebody with you. Everybody, please stand.
believing that you're not worthy. But Christ's sacrifice changes all that. It's the blood of Jesus. It's not us. I read you the scriptures. It's not us. It's Jesus. In my own, I am not worthy. In my own, I'm not complete. In my own, I am not refreshed. In my own, I am not able. But in Christ, I'm a new creation. All things are become new. And every head bowed, every eye closed. Just quickly, and I, I, I'll tell you when, just quickly. I'm asking you to acknowledge what I'm getting ready to say. And if you acknowledge it, we're going to pray. But it's going to be okay. God's got this. Before we get started, I want everybody to say, It is finished. Say it. Okay, with every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're here today and you have struggled with any of these things that you heard these lies. If you struggle with any of them and Satan has tried to get you with it, even try to sneak it in or even constantly bombarded you with these identity crises, crises, problems. Just quickly, would you just put your hand up just a little bit? Just put it up. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. You put your hands back down. Lord, bless them. Help them to know that they are new creation. You're waiting with open arms. You love us. You've made us new creations. You did something for us that nobody else could do. We couldn't do it for ourselves. I could not climb out of that pit on my own. I cannot stay clean on my own. I cannot keep a good attitude on my own. I cannot walk the walk on my own. I have to have the blood of Christ. But Satan wants to let it. He knows that too. And so he tries to keep us from the blood. He tries to keep us from claiming the blood. He tries to keep us from our confession of God's word. Right now, in the name of Jesus, touch everybody to raise our hands. Minister to them mightily in the name of Jesus. Let them know that it is finished. Quit trying to pay for it. Quit paying for something in the past. God's already marked the bill. Paid in full. With every head bowed and every eye closed, maybe you're here today. And Satan has told you, yes, that's for everybody else. But it's not for you. too bad. You've gone too far. You've taken too far this time. You might as well forget it. And then Satan said, I got you. If I'm talking to you right now, with every head bowed and every eye closed, you just say, yeah, he told me to do this for me. I'm too far gone. We just put up that hand. Just put up that hand. Father, touch him right now. In the name of Jesus. Nobody's too far gone. You forgave Peter after he denied you. You would have forgiven Judas if he would have asked. You love us that much. Right now, if you have a need from God in anything, the altars are open. You have a need from the Lord. Come on up here. It's only 11.25. we got plenty of time. We can still, still spend some time praying before the Lord. If you got any kind of need in your life, any kind of need, I want you to come. God's got this. 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 We love you, Father. We love you, Lord. We praise your name. We thank you for your grace and we thank you for your mercy. God, there's none like you. There is none. There is none like you. Lord God, we trust you totally in the name of Jesus. We trust you, Lord. We trust you, Lord. We thank you for all that you do for us, Lord. We thank you for all that you do. You're an awesome God. You're a 
powerful God. Help us carry the burden to the cross and leave it there. Carry our burdens to the cross and leave it there. You're an awesome God. Everybody just put your hands up. Put your hands up. I want you to just start thanking Him. Just thank Him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Go ahead and verbalize the church. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for what you did. I could not do it on my own. Thank you, God, for the cross. Because it's the cross I made perfect. It's in the cross that I made eligible for heaven. It's in the cross that I can live and walk this life and holy before you in the cross. Thank you, Father. Glory to the Lamb of God. Glory to the Lamb of God. Glory to the Lamb of God. Thank you, Father.